Here we have another Centurion match on Prokhorovka, so we're pubbing this one. Now I was going to cut back on the number of videos I upload, but this match I kind of want to show you. It wasn't a particularly intense match, in fact it was pretty boring. Um, it started out kind of badly, but it just progressed to easy damage farming. But more to the point than showing off, oh, you know, I can get huge amounts of damage in the Centurion, I want to show off why it was allowed to happen. I start out by heading east towards the hill, which is pretty standard for what I do in my scent. Um, I will try and spot mid with some of my mediums, usually the Soviet mediums, sometimes my bat chat. But in Centurion's case, it's far too large to pull that off. It's a big, easy target for both tanks and Arty. There are no Arty in this match, but even for tanks, it's just too risky to try and spot that. So instead, I take it to the hill. Pretty standard place to take a Centurion is, you know, the biggest hill on the map, where you're guaranteed a good hold down spot. The only problem is I look behind me and notice this train of puppies following me, which is not something I want. I've also been lit on the way up by a fairly aggressive little AMX. So the enemy team know I'm coming up here. They also know I've got about half my team in trail. This wouldn't be so much of a problem if they pushed onto the top of the hill itself. Instead, they want to stop and form a gun line on my position, which is not ideal by any measure. A44 pushes up. I got a 54 coming up the hill. Terrible shot from me there. I got all these guys pushing up behind me. Now I know I'm not going to get space with them jostling for position. But I decide to just hang on for a moment and see if there's any shots I can get from up here. But although well, I get a shot into the IS8, it's a low roll and he puts a shot into me. At least his is also a low roll. At this point, I finally decide, yep, we've got way too many on hill, it's time for me to move. Head back down, and decide I will instead play middle, where quite often if I am platoon, that's more likely, uh, platoon mates will go to farm damage off the stuff I spot on the hill. Along the way, I want to take out this AMX. Unfortunately, I stop broadside so he's able to get two hits into me the pen, and then he begins bouncing. Not really the wisest place for me to stop there. Replay's getting a little jittery, so I'll just try and get it to run smoother here. Our guys finally start pushing up the hill. I'm looking for shots there, but I just don't have a line on anything. The hill itself is in the way. I'm trying to get one on the Super Pershings, I crest over the rails, but it doesn't happen. I also get relit for firing that shot, so it wasn't a very good plan. I have six crests and takes a shot at me, thankfully he only tracks me. As you can see, the enemy team are kind of contained on the back slope of the hill, which is exactly where I need them to be to shoot them from mid. The only problem is we have a number of enemy tanks also on the one and two lines, and we don't have eyes on them because our own heavies are sitting way in the back, and our Type 59 is reluctant to spot because he's already lost a lot of hit points trying to do it. There's an IS-6 here still in the center, which is going to be a pain in the ass, but I take my opportunity while no one's looking my way and roll up and take a pop at the Super Pershing. Now, this is a point I want to make here. If you have a tank with decent enough gun depression, you don't even need to stop and aim. All you do is auto-aim the nearest tank to you, roll up, stop for maybe a tenth of a second, click, and then back off. In fact, in a couple of tanks, say T-62 uh, or the Object 140, you don't even technically need to stop. You can fire as you roll up or as you roll back. There is an IS-8 in the back here who could be a problem for me if he starts paying attention, but I shot that works quite badly. So 122-44 next to me on my right side is playing rather dangerously. He's right up on that hill, so his entire side is exposed to all these guys. The only reason he isn't dead yet is because 
they're too busy engaging the stuff on our side with the ring in front of them. The 12244 is also risking being hit by me if he happens to drive in front of my gun. See a chance to get a shot into the IS-8, so I take it. He is the biggest threat to me at the moment. Making it a little difficult here. I don't stop and scope up and zoom in and everything because I don't want to spend too long crested on that hill. That would be suicide. But I'm still taking the shots because it'd be pointless not to. The Centurion carries so much ammo you literally cannot run yourself out of ammunition over the course of battle and don't have enough time. That time I do actually aim. Somebody's been slinging HE at the IS-8, so I let them know not to do that. Unfortunately, I'm not sure whether my advice is heard. And here I thought I was in trouble, but... The IS-3, being the puppy he is, goes for the lower health target instead of the more dangerous target. In that situation, I guess it it might have appeared the right thing to do. Bit of a snapshot there, and uh, poor decision making from me somehow ends up good. Technically, it's a better idea to take guns out of the game. So if you have a low health tank versus a, a higher health but more dangerous tank, you take the low health tank just to get its gun out. The problem in that case is the 12244 wasn't in a position where his gun was able to do any damage. So technically, although he was taking a gun out of the game by killing it, it wasn't an effective gun. And I think this is something you'll hear a lot when I talk about sort of uh, strategy and tactics for World of Tanks. The word effective, effective damage per minute, effective gun, it's, I mean, it doesn't count if it's not being used. You could have the highest DPM in the game, but if you're not using it, it, it your DPM is zero. Uh, if you are in a fixed casemate tank destroyer and you can't rotate to hit your targets like that guy, then your effective DPM is zero. Your gun is not an active gun and there's no reason to take it out of the game. In that situation, I think if I was the IS-3, I would have shot my Centurion. Tiger rolls across here. I'm not sure why. Gets him killed. And so... We've pretty much cleaned up the whole enemy team at this point. I take a blind shot at the last position in the T-34, but obviously he's moved back slightly, judging by the direction indicator. And here we go, the M103 starts bitching up a storm about me. Um, apparently his reason for complaining was I penned him twice on the side of the turret, which is obviously wrong. I penned him exactly once. Now, I figured maybe I blind hit him or something, but I went back and checked after the game, and you'll be able to see in the post-game uh, post screens. I hit him and penned him exactly once, so I don't know where he's getting this idea I did twice from. Um, I'm guessing he's a typical puppy, he's not using any mods, so he doesn't know what's hit him from where. Um, he's just guessing, basically. Somebody else probably hit him and he assumed it was me, which is obviously bullshit. The scent has a 10 second reload, I can't hit him twice that quickly. But, you know, the usual pubby attribute supply and cold Dunning Kruger effect comes in here. He calls me a liar and says I shot more than once. Well, check the post game screens. I certainly did not pen him more than once. I trust my XVM damage readout a lot more than I trust some bad pubby. Enemy ST1 here is occupied. So I'm able to come up behind him and get a couple more points of damage in before the game is over. Again, there's somebody shooting HE. I think it's actually our Tiger. So, pretty easy game. was able to get over 6,000 damage off of that. Really, I shouldn't have been allowed to do that. Um, and quite often, if you have that many tanks bottled up on the back of hill where the enemy team were in that uh, D0, E0 area, quite often at least one or two of them will be looking towards the center. Now, I was right on the rails, so I'm easily within their render distance. Uh, from the zero line, they can render out to just past that IS-8's position there. So about halfway into the five line is as far as you can render. If I'd popped up here instead, I would have been in render for these guys, but not for these guys. Um, but of course, if I'd popped up that far out, I would not be able to render them either, so it'd be pointless. Um, the position here, 
again, where the IS-8 is, where, where I was firing from earlier, is very useful for breaking a deadlock on the hill. Which is, you know, quite often something that happens. You get to, your tanks up on the hilltop, but they can't push further because there's tank destroyers here. Uh, and the enemy team can't push over the crest of the hill because there's that many guns up there. The only problem with this position is, aside from the complete lack of arty cover, it's within render of the two line. Perhaps not if they're far enough back, but if they push down to, say, C2, D2, you're just in their render, which means they're able to hit you as you come over. Potentially, if these guys start paying attention to what you're doing, you can be fired on from two or three sides, three being if they have somebody sitting on A6, where that IS-8 was. Now, normally that A6 position isn't a very good one. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for a heavy tank, maybe for a tank destroyer at best, but depending on who's there and what's going on along the middle of the map, that position can actually be quite useful for locking down both the five line and also the hill. Because remember, this guy, if he rolls enough eastwards, can hit up around the uh, edge of the hill, the crest of the hill there, which makes it very risky for your, your team, assuming you're south, to roll out and try and get shots from the edge of the hill. Quite often, I find myself when I go hill, unable to get shots over the side. I have to wind my way back and try and shoot out diagonally from this direction across at mid. Um, simply because if you try and roll over the edge here and get shots this way, it's uh, quite likely you'll be hit by tank destroyers or heavies sitting back on the island or back on that rail crossing. The opposite position, so south spawns rail crossing here, assuming your team is north, can hit part way on this side of the hill, but it can't hit you if you're way back here on the crest. Um, it can hit you as you goes up. Uh, sorry, as you go up, I believe you're still at its render range. It's also useful for controlling middle. That's the main point of that railway crossing: is it gives you control of the middle and it gives you some degree of control of the east. But it's a very exposed position. You can be shot, obviously, from anywhere that can see. Anywhere you can see, you can be seen from, essentially. So you can be shot from two or three directions. And you're also very open to arty. I mean, you have the train as cover, but it's it's realistically not very good arty cover. I wouldn't take it. And you have no concealment. There's no bushes there, no camouflage. So if you're up on the rails themselves, you're very visible. Um, I may as well throw in a bit on the two-line. Two-line isn't something you can really throw away. On encounter on this map, I'm a bit more inclined to say fuck two line, just go hill, because obviously the hill controls the cap and the cap controls the game. Um, but in standard battle, two line is important. Often as well, you have your, a lot of uh, larger TDs head there because it's just the best environment for them. There's a lot of vegetation. Uh, they don't have to worry about turning their turrets because it's unlikely they're going to be flanked. They have a big open field to shoot into. You know, it's happy days for a TD. Generally, you don't want to push too far up the two line. You don't want to sit back in J and K2, where you can't render enemy, but you want to push up, say, uh, H2, G2, and just sort of sit there for a while. Let, let your mediums or light tanks work middle. See what's sitting in the uh, opposite position, uh, position Sorry for the enemy. And if it looks clear, you can maybe then afford to push up. I usually push up 5, 10 meters at a time, Maybe if it looks clear you can afford a grid square or two at a time, but just don't rush it. Take it slow, you've got plenty of time. And you want to not be dealing with three or four tanks at once. You want to try and light them one at a time. And quite often, as well, tanks will string themselves out, which makes it easier to do. Um, if you encounter a gun line on the two line, you're in big trouble. But if you encounter, say, a tank in E2, a tank in C1, sort of that thing where they're all spaced out, it's a lot easier to work with because then you can move into the spotting range of only one tank at a time or the render range of one tank at a time to deal with them. Prokhorovka is one of the oldest maps in the game. Uh, it's also one of the sort of least changed. I don't think the devs have really done much with it at all over the years except add the encounter mode. I think the island was changed slightly and sort of the shape of the hill's been messed with a few times, but in general the layout of the map is very similar to what it used to be uh, in beta, and if you look far enough through the thousands of videos of World of Tanks I have uploaded at some point or other, um, a lot of the games I had from beta on this map, you, you can tell it's very much the same map. Um, the elevation of certain points of it's changed, 
like the sort of ribbed hills in the middle but the actual layout of the map with the two line road and the rails down six line hasn't changed at all i think it's a pretty good map as far as balance goes it's one of the more balanced maps i don't believe either side really has a significant advantage over the other i mean you could argue the island is a bit of an advantage for north spawn but i mean really uh south spawn has I don't know, I, I honestly wouldn't say the island's a big advantage. I think South Spawn has it slightly better for uh, getting into position without being seen because North Spawn have to push a scout all the way down to the F-line to spot anything that that uh, comes through there, whereas South can quite clearly see people as they cut across here if they get anyone basically into the middle or even onto the, the uh, F-line themselves. Otherwise, it's pretty balanced. I mean... Both teams even seem to get to the hill about the same time because obviously South have a much steeper way up and they have to sort of hook back around the gully there whereas North can just cut straight across the field and have a gentler slope. So honestly, I think it is a, a quite balanced map. I think it's an alright map to play. It does get a little dreary at times. Um, certainly the city maps are a bit more exciting, but I mean, it's, it's a good demonstration of of how you design a decent World of Tanks map. There's plenty of room for mediums and lights to play around. There's decent areas for heavies and TDs to sort of stake out at a distance. But the one thing you have to always remember is where you can be seen from and where you can be hit from. That's the, the biggest thing that lets people down is being in zero line and forgetting they can be shot from E5 or uh, being in E5 and forgetting they can be seen from both sides of the map as well as the enemy rail crossing. That's, I think, the biggest thing that lets a lot of people down is they're not aware of where they can be seen from. If you can see it, it can see you. That doesn't just apply to tanks that are actually spotted, that applies to terrain features. If you can see a bush, any tank in that bush can see you, and you have to weigh up how likely is it that, that there's somebody parked there. For instance, if you can see the island, you know the island can see you, and you can be pretty fucking sure there is a tank destroyer sitting in B9 or uh, A0. It's, it's just one of those things. So as ever, um, map awareness, situational awareness, and some... I want to say uh, some prediction of what the enemy team are going to do because you get lulled into a false sense of security there and, and you end up with people who just throw the book out the window completely and do whatever they want. And honestly, I find that's the hardest thing to counter in World of Tanks is people who do something you don't expect. So don't get too locked into the pubby mindset of, oh, each map has a certain meta, it plays a certain way. Um, you don't want to be reacting to situations, you want to be seeing them, and, and you want to be making the situations, essentially. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, as, as much as you might know, oh, I can be shot from the hill, so I'll go middle and shoot into them. Or, you know, I'll go two line, and then that way I'll probably be safe until they run a scout over mid. Just be ready for anything. Um, be ready for aggressive scout pushes, be ready for people suiciding into your tank. I was playing with Hardest yesterday and had somebody in a JP2 actually bust all the way down the lumberyard of Ensk, and he put a shot into me before anyone killed him. Now obviously that was throwing away a pretty good tier 8 tank destroyer for one shot into a pattern, but that kind of thing is what you have to be ready for. Anyway, uh, I've droned on for long enough. There will be at least a couple more videos following this. I've got, I think, another one in the Centurion, and then one in the Object 430. I think there are a couple more after that. But um, the overall rate of upload is definitely going to be a bit slower. So I've got to <laughs> catch up to my backlog, which at the time of recording now, um, about halfway through August, is nearly eight months, in fact. I'm still uploading videos from February. So by the time you see this, it'll probably be the end of the year. And this may even be out-of-date information, but, you know, what can you do? Maybe when I uh, move to a country with better internet, I'll be able to upload them more regularly. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, if this kind of thing is interesting to you at all, it's something I put out on the regular. Um, I have an awful lot of World of Tanks videos uploaded, and there will probably be a fairly steady supply of them. Maybe not quite so much as there have been so far, but, you know, it's just something I like to do up games and sort of explain what I was thinking or what I could have done better. And hopefully people can learn from them. Thanks for watching. See you next time.